We're wrapping up another oppressive afternoon and the thunderstorms haven't even gotten started yet. We'll track a very busy weather evening coming up. Also ahead, it looks like a medical mystery on a flight from Dubai to New York. A jet quarantined at JFK. We have the latest. Paula. A local woman and her physician say that a selfie saved her life because she recognized the symptoms of a stroke. We've got the picture so you can see it and believe it. These stories are happening now on Local 4 First at 4. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. We are suffering through another sweltering day. Just imagine how hot some classrooms are feeling right now. Southfield schools are closed today. It's the second time in this new school year. Pontiac schools had a half day scheduled and all school activities were canceled. A heat advisory remains in effect until 10 p.m. And Ben Bailey watching out for possible storms. So what can we expect, Ben? Yeah, we got two areas that we're keeping an eye on. Obviously, the heat's one, the storm's number two. The good news is this is the last day for this mess. 96, the heat index right now. It is going to feel about 20 degrees cooler than this at this time tomorrow. But that heat advisory does remain in effect, mainly for the metro zone and for Monroe County for about the next six hours. And then we'll start seeing relief tonight. Here's another piece of good news. We've been carved out of the severe risk. That remains Remains now on the west side of the state. Everything working a little bit slower. So by the time those storms get here, there's not going to be a whole lot of instability and stuff for those storms to work with. That's all that's showing up on the radar now, but it will be a lot more widespread tonight. We'll look at the timing of those storms and when the relief shows up coming up. Well, many of you have been following the story of two injured road workers at ClickOnDetroit.com today. They were involved in a crash in Farmington Hills. It happened on M5 near Drake Road. The workers were in a pickup truck slowing down to pull over and then set up a work zone. And that is when police say another driver hit them. The workers' orange truck flipped upon impact. They were with the Road Commission for Oakland County, which is asking all drivers to slow down when you see projects on the road. Ferndale police on the lookout for a man who posted racist flyers on the doors of a church. This video was posted on the Ferndale police Twitter account. It shows the man hanging the flyers on three entrances of the First United Methodist Church on Woodward Avenue. They were discovered on Sunday. If you can identify this man, please call police. Now. We have an update on an attempted sexual assault over in Clinton Township. We told you about a woman who was attacked while running on the track at Chippewa High School. Well, now police are looking to see if the suspect might be connected to another crime. The first incident happened in Shelby Township on August 26th on 22 Mile near Shelby Road. That is where a man exposed himself and then tried to touch a woman. There are similarities in the suspect description given by the woman who fought off an assault at Chippewa. The Ford Escape, seen on your screen, drove away from the high school on the morning of September 2nd. If you can help with either case, call Shelby Township or Clinton Township Police. Now let's get to the latest on that jet that was quarantined at JFK in New York after reports passengers on board were sick. The numbers vary on how many people exactly were sick and initially we were told 100 people complained of coughing and some had fever, but the mayor of New York is now saying 19 people were sick with 10 of them actually going to the hospital. The flight was carrying 500 people from Dubai to New York. The Centers for Disease Control led a massive response. Right now, though, the cause of the illness is not clear. Tropical Storm Gordon never became a hurricane, but it's still leaving a path of death and destruction. Gordon hit the Gulf Coast overnight, killing a child after a tree was blown on a mobile home in Pensacola, Florida. The storm pounded parts of Mississippi, Alabama, and the Florida Panhandle. Now a tropical depression, the storm remains dangerous, and some of the remnants are expected to push into the Midwest. It has been a long, intense day on Capitol Hill for Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. Democrats throwing in some really tough questions on tough topics. Republicans, less confrontational. Kimberly Gill has been monitoring the hearing. She joins us now from the newsroom. So, Kim, what are the standout issues? Hi, Karen. Good afternoon to you. The list of topics is very long, and we're going to show you uh, his answers to questions about presidential immunity and Roe versus Wade. Critics say Kavanaugh may help overturn the decision that legalized abortion. Here's one of Kavanaugh's answers on that topic. I understand the, the importance that people attach to the Roe v. Wade decision, to the Planned Parenthood versus Casey decision. 
Uh, I don't live in a bubble. I understand, I live in the real world. I understand the importance of the issue. Uh, Democrats are also concerned that Kavanaugh has seemed to indicate that presidents should not be under investigation while in office. Kavanaugh used the following example, trying to ease those concerns. Listen. You think about United States versus Nixon, which I've identified as one of the greatest moments uh, in American judicial history, where Chief Justice Berger, who had been appointed by President Nixon, uh, brought the court together in a unanimous decision to order President Nixon in response to a criminal trial subpoena to disclose information. So the questions for Kavanaugh are expected to continue into the evening. Occasionally, protesters try to interrupt, but they're escorted out promptly, and the senators just keep on going. So Karen will have more information from Washington tonight on the news at 5. I'll keep monitoring it here in the newsroom. Until then, and for now, we'll send it back to you in the studio. All right, we appreciate that. Thank you very much, Kim. Well, we are getting our first look at the men British officials have charged with the nerve agent poisoning of British ex-spy Sergei Skripal and his daughter. Police say the two flew from Moscow to London two days before the Skripals were found unconscious on a public bench back on March 4th. Today, the men were charged with conspiracy to murder, attempted murder, and use of a nerve agent. The Kremlin is denying it played a role in the poisoning, saying Britain is not sharing any intelligence with them. The news book written about the Trump White House is facing a bitter backlash from the president and his administration. Author Bob Woodward describes a White House in chaos and reportedly labeled Crazy Town by Chief of Staff John Kelly. The key parties are issuing denials, and today the president had this to say. The book is a work of fiction. If you look back at Woodward's past, he had the same problem with other presidents. He likes to get publicity, sell some books. In spite of the president's opinion, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham is offering this perspective. You should believe that Bob Woodward's a good reporter. Uh, you should take some of it with uh, uh, caution. The whole theme of the book is that uh, President Trump can run hot and be volatile. I agree. Uh, the process is one thing. The outcome's another. The book is called Fear, Trump in the White House. It will be officially released next Tuesday. Well, take a look at this selfie. And when you take a look, what do you see? Luckily, this woman was worried about what she saw, and the photo led her to seek medical attention. You could definitely say the selfie helped save her life. Let's bring in Paula Tubman. She's outside Henry Ford Macomb Hospital with this story. All right, Paula, you have the intrigued. Okay, very good, because this thing, this pesky confounding thing how many of us have done this and this and this but at this time that exact moment for this woman it made all the difference in the world because the cell phone gods were on her side or oh my goodness today is the last day of inpatient physical therapy for juanita branch no pain today tomorrow she's going home after 26 days at henry ford health system hospital macomb after suffering what should have been a life-altering stroke who dangles on one foot but she leaves with minimal deficits and a brand new love for selfies I tease people about taking selfies. The 63-year-old Frazier woman had worked hard to lose weight and decided she needed to update her Facebook page profile picture. She lives alone, so she decided to take the dreaded selfie. And I'm doing my pose, how I'm gonna pose for my Facebook page, and I'm taking about eight pictures, and I'm like going through them and going, what the heck is going on? Each picture was getting worse. When she looked at the photos, here's what she saw. A stroke happening before her very eyes and the camera, all captured, a frame at a time. And I'm like, oh my God, I think I'm having a stroke. What's happening here? And my face had drooped, my eye had drooped, everything had drooped. And that's what made me go, oh my goodness. And it was happening while I was taking the pictures. You can see in the pictures how it was happening. She called 911 immediately, was at the hospital within 30 minutes. And here's what's remarkable. That timestamp on those pictures told physicians everything they needed to know about that stroke to give her a wonder drug, TPA. Basically a clot busting medication that we use um, in uh, acute strokes uh, for people that come in within a three to four and a half hour time period. And it can basically reverse, uh, reverse strokes if we can get it to patients um, quickly enough. 
It's after that, it can cause more bleeding in the brain. Doctors know it can work if they get it on board in time, but they usually can't because they can't pinpoint the start of a stroke. Juanita's photos documented the exact onset of that stroke so doctors could stop it, reverse much of the damage, and reduce progressive deficits. In plain English, the selfies saved Juanita's life. And she also knew how to act fast. She knew the symptoms of a stroke, fast, facial drooping, arms get weak, speech slurred, time to call 911, get to the hospital, get some help. It made all the difference in the world. She is going to be A-OK, -okay, Karen. Wow, Juanita is amazing and it's Fun, amazing. right? It really is, I mean, for her to recognize that and then to act so quickly. I'm so glad she's doing OK. How about, yes, for her to recognize it, but for the camera to catch it so the doctors could act, that's big. Quick silly question, Paula. Did she ever update her Facebook profile afterwards? <laughs> well, I'm sure she's going to do that, but I can tell you this. She now loves the selfie. Uh, the selfie. Well, I think a lot of people do <laughs> as well. All right, thank you, Paula. We appreciate it. Well, more people are sick because of salmonella contamination. The FDA says people are not getting the message. We will have exactly what you need to know. Also, you may have been missing something every time you looked at the Mona Lisa. Take a close look why one doctor thinks the woman in the painting may have been sick when she posed for Da Vinci. A first, running from the box, cops, never a good idea, but officers ended up having to wash this guy off with a hose. The bad decision he made when we come back.